Uh, India's moon rover has taken its first steps on the lunar surface a day after the country made history by becoming the first to land near the South Pole. Big jubilation, of course, over there. Prime Minister Modi getting very excited about this, saying it's a, it's a, a, a big step, not one small step. A big, I'm paraphrasing it. A big step, not just for India, but for, for the wider world as well. The rover ramped down from the lander, and India took a walk on the moon, the space agency said. The Vikram lander successfully touched down, of course, yesterday. With this, India joins an elite club of countries to achieve a soft landing on the moon after the US, the former Soviet Union and China. It will now roam around the rocks and the craters, gathering crucial data and images to be sent back to Earth for analysis. But here's the question. Is India leading the way now over NASA and the United States in the space race? Dr. David Whitehouse, author and astronomer, is with us. David, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. It was clearly a big step for uh, for India, and as Mr. Modi said, you know, for the wider world, there is obvious significance. But we also know that there is a bit of vanity in these things as well. You know, countries do like to be up there; they like to be the first, and uh, they will be, I'm sure, jubilant for the for a long while to come over there in India. Um, and the Americans might be looking on in slight wonderment, thinking this was never meant to happen? Well, um, yes, India is justly proud of the fact that it is the first to land at the south pole of the moon. The Russians tried it a few days earlier, but their craft crashed. So they will be absolutely delighted that they have got the first touchdown, the first analysis, the first ground truth of what it's like at that important region of the moon, which is going to be the focus for future lunar exploration. India was there first, and nothing can take that away from them. It's a big step for Indian science, engineering, and technology. And it shows that India sees space as an important part of its economy, of its technical development. I mean, it's always been an important part in the past because India has used space pragmatically for land use, to uh, look at drainage, to look at the health of crops, the spread of disease, uh, for weather forecasting and the prediction of, uh, of, of um, storms and stuff like that. So they've always had a pragmatic use of space, but now they're moving into exploration, uh, going further. And although they won't rival the emerging China space superpower and the Americans, they will be an important player. And I think reading what's behind the lines here is that they're looking to say to China, um, as Russia declines as a space power, look, we are a valuable collaborator when you go back to the moon and go back to Mar go on to Mars. Who is leading the way still? I mean, would it still be fair to say that NASA are leading the way? I mean, we've got the Chinese, oh. as you rightly say. Well, what's the, what's the pecking order looking like? Certainly, the United States has a space program far in far better than than and than anybody else in terms of its breadth and in terms of its abilities. Russia is a declining space power, apart from its cooperation on the International Space Station, where there are cosmonauts, but that's going to end in a few years' time. So Russia is declining. China has a very interesting space program. It wants to be the world's major space power in a few decades' time. As it gets richer, it can spend more money on space. It has a space station, uh, crewed, at the moment, it has landed on the moon. Um, it has sent probes to Mars. It's, it's, got, it's got great ambitions, and it's doing it very intelligently. Although America's going to go back to the moon with people, China is in it for a much longer period. So over the next few years, it will be America that will dominate the exploration of the moon. But in the 2030s and 2040s, it might be a different matter. Yeah, It's interesting with India. I, I mean, it, it's not that long ago, relatively speaking, that India you know, had almost third world status. And here it is with a, a space program landing on the moon and a part of the moon that nobody else has been to. That's right. It, it Like China, India sees a space program, an exploration program, as part of its ticket to the status of the world's great nations. You cannot be a major player in any field of international relations if you do not have this aspect to your society. Mm. But also they realize um, that actually space activity makes the country richer. 
Because a lot of people criticise how much money India is spending on space when it has so many people who are haven't got enough to eat. But they don't realise that when you spend money on this type of thing, you don't spend it in space. You spend it on salaries. You spend it in companies. You spend it on IT and technology that takes this abilities and the technology elsewhere into industry. So actually, you do get a return on what you spend for this, not just in terms of Navendra Modri saying this is a great day for India and holding his head up um, at me, you know, internationally. This is actually an important part of a modern economy. Yeah. And that's what is going to take India uh, and make it richer and enable it to so so solve all its other problems. And what are they all looking for up there? I know it's an obvious question, David. You know, you can send your little machinery out there to have a mooch around the craters and the rocks and the like, and uh, they're coming back with... Oh, it's some water. OK, that's a revelation. There's some water down. We didn't know that. <laughs> Look at that. There's some rocks, and we know these rocks are X amount of thousand years old, so it's got some rocks, it's got some water, uh, and that's kind of it really i don't ever recall ever being utterly blown away i'm sure you are in your world but i never i don't think i've ever seen that headline going you won't believe what we found up here well the moon there are several answers to to why we're on the moon and why this is interesting uh, the moon south pole is a particularly unique place uh, the both poles are that it has water it has ice there and if you're going to build a moon base if you're going to stay there then this water is a valuable resource and we should learn to get it out of the ground to drink mm. to irrigate to turn into oxygen so if you are going to explore the moon with people the south pole is the place to go and india is the first to sample this region but you could argue why do we explore the moon what good, what good is it in in the end um, when we have all these problems down here. Well, it has to be seen in, in relation to everything else. We, to cope with our problems, we need all the science and technology we can get. And this is exploration. This is pushing technology to the edge. Yeah. This is inspiring people. And um, if we don't explore in some sense, then we lose something fundamental about ourselves. Uh, but there are people who quite rightly say, why spend so many millions on this when you could spend so many millions on alleviating, alleviating poverty? Indeed. And one wonders That's whether... a philosophical a, question. Well, indeed, yes. And there's a whole other debate there as well. Um, but in terms of that point, the, the amount of money, the reason that it's instinctive in, in humankind, um, can you imagine that the, the boys and girls at NASA right now preparing to... You know, they've looked at India, they've congratulated India and said, you call that a rocket? No, this is a rocket. Are these guys now... <laughs> off on their mission now are the americans going to touch down on the moon again there are going to be several small missions landing at the south pole over the next year or so american companies to build on what india has done first uh, but the next big thing is going to be the end of next year when a crew of four fly around the moon and this is the, be the first time since 1972 that humans will have left the vicinity of the Earth and they're going to fly around the moon and go through um, a practice for a landing a year or two later. So a year or two later, NASA has said it will put the first black astronaut and the first woman as the 13th person to walk upon the moon. And that's important, I would say, because generation... I grew up enthralled by armstrong on the moon i have never forgotten it yeah. it changed me it changed a whole generation and since then no generations have have been able to experience that we have subsequent generations of engineers and scientists have let down their offspring by not going back to the moon so a new generation kids will experience going to the moon in a new way and that'll change their lives, of and course. it'll change the future. And just in a word, David, fast forward 20 years, uh, who's likely to be out in front when it comes to the space race, India or the United States? That's a difficult question. I would say India and China would be level pegging with um, India alongside the European Space Agency. They will be the major space players in 20 years' time. We'll have a base on the moon, and in 20 wow. years' time, we'll be planning to send people to Mars. Well, I might see you there. David, thank you. Dr David Whitehouse, author and astronomer, with us here on Talk TV.